episode brought to you by MeepleRealty.com, your source for high-quality custom board game inserts. Meeple Realty, think inside the box. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online Board Offline. Today we're bringing you a Kingdom Death Monster gameplay. Now this is from my solo campaign that I'm doing. I'm not going to run you through the entire campaign. I, entire campaign. I don't want to take the time. That'll just slow my solo campaign down quite a bit. Instead, when individual, you know, specific notable moments come up, that's when I'm going to bring you into my solo campaign and, and film that session. Today is my first encounter with the Screaming Antelope, so I wanted to bring that to you. I, I'll probably later show you a, a level two white lion whenever I encounter, encounter that the first time, and maybe a, the, you know, the butcher at level two, and, and some other notable moments as we go along. So with this, this is Lantern Year 3 in the game, so it's my third session. Now, keep in mind, this is my first time ever playing Kingdom Death Monster, or my first campaign. So there are going to be some rules, without a doubt, that I get wrong, I would imagine. I would love it if y'all could help me by, by putting in the comments section below. That will help me get better at playing the game myself. And um, I, I know that I catch a few of the rules errors when we're playing. One of the major ones, and I, I I don't think it affected the gameplay too much, but I it did still affect it a little bit. I actually put a trait card in the AI deck. The Screaming Antelope starts with this ability, a Trample. It's supposed to just start. It's, it's called it's a trait, which means it just starts the game that way, and it helps it deal a little extra damage to my survivors. Instead, I put it in the AI deck, and I realized later on um, when I was facing the butcher, and you know later on in my campaign, that in fact all the traits are supposed to start out on the board already there. So you'll see that happen in the video. Uh, I'm going to actually split this into two parts because this one ran a little bit long. So you're going to get the first part right now, and the second part will be coming out in a few days, I hope. So without anything else, let's get right to it. By the way, if you want to skip, uh, you go straight to the hunt phase. That is in the uh, description below. And then also you can skip directly to the showdown phase. So check that out down below and let's get right to the game. Okay, so before we get to the actual hunt track, let's take a look here. We've got Leah here who has two survival, seven insanity. And then we've got one arm on the head, arms and body. And over here, one Courage, one Hunt XP. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So you can see we've got the, the Rawhide headband, the Rawhide vest, and the Rawhide gloves. So that, I'll, oh, by the way, on here, let me show you this. Since I'm dealing with all these guys at the same time, obviously this is where permanent increases to, you know, evasion and accuracy and all that stuff will go. But whenever I get a increase based on some gear that I've got and right here I have the the red affinity and the blue affinity linked up with the rawhide vest which gives me plus one evasion I'm going to be marking that directly underneath that so I remember to add that in whenever something's going on so we've got all that stuff going on there and you know what let's get a little closer to that so you can see what those things do so with the Rawhide Headband, I can use an activation to reveal the top two AI cards of the monster, place them back on top in any order. And I could do that now that the blue affinity is set up there. Like I said with the Rawhide Vest, I get plus one evasion. The Rawhide Gloves, when I depart, gain plus one survival, which I've already added to Leah's track there, to Leah's um, player sheet. Also have the fecal salve down here, and when you depart, you gain plus one survival, which is where her second survival on this sheet came from. And then I can use an activation, and then Leah will not be a threat until she attacks, and if she has the priority target token, I can use that activation to remove it. And then of course she has the cloth for her waist armor. Okay, now I didn't have this on there a moment ago, uh, but I'm, well, I'm gonna be using these to help differentiate between the characters. Now this right here, Luther, is my only male character currently playing, so I don't really need that to differentiate him, but I'll also be flipping these over whenever I activate the, the character in order to remember that they've gone that round. All right, so let's take a look at Luther. He's got uh, no survival right now. It, by the way, you can see we've got dodge, encourage, and dash because I did unlock dash on my last play. So we've got seven insanity, three armor on his head, one armor on his waist. 
over here, two hunt experience. He uh, has one courage, one understanding, and timeless eye. Now, what is timeless eye for his fighting art? He has... Your attack roll is a perfect hit on a result of 9 or 10. You cannot use Timeless Eye if you have the blind severe head injury. So perfect hit on a 9 or higher. And then down here for his grid, we've got Stone Noses. On arrival, gain plus 1 survival, plus 1 insanity. We've got the Skull Helm, obviously. Now if I do get a severe head injury, the Skull Helm is destroyed. Then the King Spear, which has reached 2. And he's got the cloth still for his waist armor. Next up, we've got Dolores. Now, Dolores, we have one survival, seven insanity, three head armor, one waist armor, two hunt XP. Weapon proficiency is the axe. Then we've got one courage. And the fighting art is ambidextrous. Weapons are paired. Paired weapons means you add their speed together and use them as a single weapon. That's why I've got the double bone axe going down here. So her speed when she attacks will actually be a four. And it'll be like one bone axe attacking with four dice, essentially, is how I understand that. So let's zoom in real quick. All right, so the skull helm again over here. I already told you about the, monster, the, the bone axes, but let's look at Savage. Once per attack, if you critically wound, calls one additional wound. This effect does not apply to impervious hit locations. And then we've got the monster Grease with plus one evasion. So you can see I've added that right here, the one evasion there from the monster Grease. And then the cloth armor as well. And finally, we've got Brandy. Now, this is one survival is what she's got. Four insanity, one head armor, one waist armor, and one hunt XP. She has two courage and two understanding. Brandy is actually the character that brought about language. And there was something else that occurred as well. Uh, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and, and try to remember what exactly it was that she did. But she spent some time in the... She didn't go on the last hunt. She spent time in the settlement instead. Now let's look at her gear grid. So here we've got a lion headdress. It's an accessory uh, or, or yeah, accessory. You may wear this in addition to one armor at this location. And then on top of that, we've got the cloth, the whisker harp on arrival. All survivors gain plus one survival. And as an a uh, activation, strum the whisper harp, roll 1d10 on a result of six plus, discard one mood currently in play. And then down here, the bone darts, which have a range of six, but they are also frail. So if I end up getting an impervious location, I'll lose them. All right, so let's get this going. We are obviously going to go up against the Screaming Antelope. I have not dealt with the Screaming Antelope before. This will be my first time. So y'all get to see me struggle as I learn how this guy is going to act. So let's move right on in here to the first space. Dead antelope. The survivors are struck by the scent of rotting meat wafting from a hulking corpse ahead. The event revealer may lead the survivors to investigate. If they do, gain one random vermin resource, two random screaming antelope resources, and roll 1d10. On a result of 7+, plus, the survivors are startled by the arrival of the antelope's killer, a white lion. In the hunt now, start showdown with the white lion. Uh, one level higher than the quarry or the highest level available using the setup rules. Add a dead monster terrain card to the showdown. If they don't investigate, roll a random hunt event. Okay. That's interesting. So, <laughs> we're on Lantern Year 3. And it's basically telling me that I can get all this extra stuff. The uh, What is it? Two random screaming antelope resources. One random vermin resource. And then after roll, if I get a 7 plus, I got to fight a level 2 white lion because it's a level 1 screaming antelope. So, but basically, uh, a 40% chance that I have to go up against something that almost certainly is going to end up in a total party kill. I think, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to do that quite yet. I'm not ready for that. Yeah, we're just going to roll, we're going to roll a random hunt event. Let's, let's do that. All right. Okay, so we've got 11. 
All right, number 11, monster droppings. The survivors find some monster droppings like those of their quarry. The event revealer chooses to either investigate or consume the droppings. That's gross. If the event revealer investigates, gain plus one understanding and roll a d10. Or if the event revealer consumes, gain plus one courage and roll a d10. Consume or so Leah is the first character, so she's the current one that would be doing this. Either gain a courage or understanding. Maybe let's go with which one gave us courage. I think that's investigate. That way we can get her closer to that courage milestone. Right? Investigate. No, investigate is plus one understanding. So actually we're going. <laughs> Leah is going to consume the monster droppings. So gain plus one courage. Let's go and do that. Okay. And then roll a d10. We've got a six. It's repulsive. Your title becomes Scatman. Everyone in the settlement must call you by that name from now on. <laughs> okay. So there we go. It's Leah Scatman. <laughs> Leah Scatman. Leah Scatman? If you say it like Scatman, it's not so bad. It sounds like a legitimate last name. All right, so anyway, but she did get one extra courage out of that, so that's good at least. One more courage, and we'll have a milestone. So obviously this is a regular hunt event, so we got to roll another random event. We've got 58. Scent on the wind. A strong wind blows, bringing with it the scents of distant places and things. The event revealer rolls 1d10. Now, this is going to be Luther, who is the event revealer this time. We've got another 6. 6 plus. The survivors smell their quarry's foul odor and surge forward. The survivors may skip the next hunt space if this movement starts the showdown. The survivors ambush the monster. Oh, yes. And look, so we will skip this space and ambush the monster. Fantastic. Let's get to the showdown. All right, so here we go. Here's the, the board. Now, I, I ambushed the monster, and I just want to make sure, as I understand ambush, when I'm the one doing the ambushing, uh, it, it says that uh, if I ambush, survivors may go first in the showdown. Okay, got that. Do not follow the setup rules on the monster story event. Instead, place the listed showdown terrain, the monster, and survivors on the showdown board as the players decide. Setup rules on the terrain cards must still be followed, however. Okay, so with that in mind, here's how I've got it set up. Okay, so I've got the Screaming Antelope here got Leah back here directly behind it in his blind spot as well as um, Dolores with her dual axes over here with the king spear is Luther and out here with the bone darts is Brandy now I put Brandy way out here for multiple reasons one that's the maximum range of the bone darts but also she's next to this scrap pile and it's that or I'm sorry debris pile which right here at the bottom set up adjacent to any board edge that's the debris all right now the dead monster has to be set up next to adjacent to the monster i'm facing which it is here we've got the bug patch which under the normal setup rules for the screaming antelope is not next to it however it says set up adjacent to the monster so i figured since i'm ambushing it and then it's said to follow the rules on the card I'm guessing the bug patch has to go there. Then for the acanthus plants, there's six total. I went ahead and put them as far away from each other and it as I could. So I've got three on this side of the board and then three over on the other side of the board there. And y'all excuse my own uh, debris pile over there. I apologize. Um, but yeah, so six acanthus plants total, but hopefully they're all spread out enough to where it's going to be more difficult for the screaming antelope to get to them. And then I'm going to get to go first as well. So let's, if anybody sees any way that I have not set this up properly, please let me know. But let's get started. By the way, I got rid of those little tokens I had. That was a bad idea. They were too difficult to move the tokens and the survivors at the same time. So instead, it's actually, I'm just going to do this. Luther 
obviously is the only male. This right here, which is the one of the new models, the young survivor model, we're gonna let that be um, Leah, Leah Scatman. So that's who's playing Leah, or which, which model Leah's using. Then on the gear grids, I've placed this starting survivor image for Dolores, who is right here with the double axes, the double bone axes. And then I've placed this starting survivor image for Brandy, who's over here. So that's gonna help me keep track and then I'll, you know, obviously use their names throughout as well so it'll be easier for y'all to keep in mind. Okay, let's get started now right away. I think we're gonna have Dolores go first. And Dolores is gonna attack with her bone axes. All right, now in the bone axes, let's see, they have an accuracy of six plus. She is in the blind spot, so five plus to hit. And we have one, two, they all hit. We have four hits right away. Okay, we have Restless Rump, which does have a reflex. All right, let's put that out for there for a second. Then we've got giant teeth, which, come on, super dense. Uh, now, are these fragile? They are, or frail, excuse me. They are frail. Oh no, does that mean, I think that means I just, did I just lose them? Super dense, if the attacker hits this location with a frail weapon, it is damaged. Archive the weapon. <laughs> oh, okay. So, we're gonna need to make this this one. Uh, we're gonna need, need to make this one count because she's about to lose both of her bone axes. Reflex. All right, so that's another reflex, and this one right here is first strike. So this one has to go first. All right, so here we go. We're hitting the restless eye first. We've got first strike. The screaming animal's massive eye glistens with human-like fear. If the attacker is insane, cancel all hits and end their attack. Otherwise, the attacker suffers from brain damage. No, wait, 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 wait. Okay, hold on, hold on. Now I'm now I'm not sure what to do. All right, so if the attacker is insane, which all of my survivors are insane that are on this trip, on this hunt, cancel all hits and in their attack, cancel all hits. So that to me says that the other hits never happened. And if the other hits never happen, then that means that I did not, in fact, hit the super dense giant teeth. All right, so this is the type of thing I'm talking about where I need the Kingdom Death Monster veterans, if any of you are watching this, to let me know in the comments below if I'm doing this right. But in my mind, if I cancel all hits, then that means essentially the Screaming Antelope stared down Dolores and prevented her from ever hitting it is how I'm, how I'm taking this. So all of these didn't happen. This hit didn't happen. That means I keep my axes is how I'm gonna play that. Someone let me know if I'm doing that wrong, but let's move on to the next survivor. So next we'll go with Leah or Leia. No, Leah. Yeah, we're gonna pronounce it Leah. With Leah, who's obviously in the blind spot as well. So she now gets to Let's see, what is she attacking with? She's attacking with, that's right, fist and tooth. So she's got two speed for that. And we have a lantern and a five. And the accuracy was an eight, so the five is a miss, but the lantern obviously is a hit, a perfect hit, not that it matters in this case. So where was the hit location? We've got the ferocious spasm, which does have a reflex, okay, but let's see if we're going to wound that. Now we have a strength of zero on the fist and tooth. The antelope has a toughness of eight. So I'm going but going to need an eight or better. Oh, we got the eight. We got the eight. Okay, so we do wound it. I'm gonna go ahead and move the AI card over to the wound stack. And then let's look here for the reflex. 
Screaming antelope frantically attacks everything around it. Zone of death, so anybody adjacent. One at a time, target each survivor in the zone of death and perform the basic action. Now, the screaming antelope's basic action is uh, pick target, closest knockdown. Hold on. Ah, okay. Uh, the the ferocious spasm says to says to one at a time target each survivor. So I don't I don't p use the pick target section of the basic action, just the move and attack. So. First, let's see. So the screaming animal is going to turn around. And one at a time. So let's go ahead and target Leia first, since she's the one that started this whole thing. And it's going to be a speed of two with a two plus accuracy and one damage. Now, Leia does have one evasion, so it's actually going to be three or better will hit. So they're both hits. By the way, just as a reminder, all my survivors are at two survival right now because even the ones that were one or zero, um, they each got one survival from the Whisker Harp, which on arrival gave them plus one survival. So as soon as they arrived at the showdown and then Luther also got an additional survival and an additional insanity from the Stone Noses, which he gains that upon arrival at a showdown as well. All right, so let's see where... Who are we doing? Uh, Leah is getting hit. Got her hand and her body. Now, the body has one armor, as do the arms. So we're going to let that go. We're not going to use any survival. We're going to take one hit in both of those. So she is at zero armor there for her arms and body. That's all at zero armor. She has one armor left on the head. So now let's roll for Dolores, who also is getting one evasion from the Monster Grease, so three plus to hit. And they both miss, they both miss. Okay, all right, so we're doing all right, we're doing okay. Let's see, next let's use Luther, and he will attack with the King's Spear, of course, which has two speed, has accuracy of six plus. Oh, and he misses with both of them. And I don't want him to move. I think I will have him move. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let's do that. I'll keep him out of the zone of death if another one of those type cards comes up. He is on the dead monster, so he'll be able to scavenge the dead monster next time. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. So that's his activation. Moving on to Brandy, which will be our final activation. She's got the bone darts, but I'm thinking instead of the bone darts, instead of doing that, let's actually go ahead and scavenge the debris. Now, do you have to be on top of, of terrain or next to it? Hold on, let me check real quick. Okay, yeah, uh, if, I, if she's on it or adjacent to it, she can try to interact, and that's what she's gonna do. We're gonna do roll a d10, see what happens here. Get an eight, that's usually pretty good. Find useful gear, gain one bone blade gear card, and archive this terrain. So here is the bone blade, it's a weapon, melee, sword, bone, and it's frail. All right, but now that will give Brandy the ability to have some melee combat capabilities as well. All right, and then she's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That way she can interact with that bug patch here momentarily. Unless something horrible happens. Okay, so after all that, just one wound to the screaming antelope, and it is now his turn. So very first AI card is Stomp and Snort. Pick target, random survivor in range which is all of them. So let's figure it out. Let's roll this. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight, so picking Luther. Intimidate target. The screaming antelope begins to stomp and snort excitedly. A gurgled moan sounds from its undermouth. Turn to face target and roll D 1d10. 
Let's see what we got. Roll 1d10. An 8. I want a result come on, of 4 plus. The target suffers 1 brain damage per monster level and is knocked down. In addition, if the target is insane, they suffer knockback 5, which he definitely is insane. All right, so Luther suffers 1 brain damage, which brings his insanity down to 7. And then he suffers knockback 5. One, two, three, four, five, and I believe it said he's also knocked down. All right, so now back to the survivors. We're going to go with Dolores again. She is going to once again attempt to maim this screaming antelope with her axes. So we go speed four. And well, what was the accuracy again? Six plus, and we're in the blind spot, so five plus. So that's going to be three hits. Oh, jeez. See? All right, here we go. We've got a trap, so it doesn't even matter what the rest of it was. Um, let's zoom out a little bit. All right, so the trap. The screaming antelope panics. It's undermouth unleashing an inhuman whale. It bucks wildly and leaps into the air. The attacker is doomed. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer two brain damage per monster level. Knock back five and are knocked down. Oh boy. So all survivors adjacent to the monster. So that's going to be Dolores and Leah. Leah and Dolores are both down to five insanity. So for knocked back five, one, two, three, four, five, and are knocked down. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously the same adjacent there. And continuing on, the monster lands on its belly and begins to slide on its teeth. Turn the monster directly away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. On collision, non-deaf survivors gain one random disorder in addition to normal collision rules. Ooh. Full move is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, will not he won't collide with Luther, so that's good. So he moves here. Sorry about that. He's right there next to Luther, as you can see. And then, of course, we reshuffle the hit location deck, which now means that not only is the trap back in there, but I've also got to worry about the super dense giant teeth as well. Okay, so now basically we've got Luther, Leah, and Dolores all knocked down. That leaves us with Brandy right here. Now, I was going to let Brandy go after the, you know, start dealing with these two things and see what she could get. But I'm thinking now, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, she'll move one, two, and then throw her bone darts at the Screaming Antelope. And the bone darts have a one speed, seven plus accuracy. So here we go. It's a one. Nothing. All right. So let's see what the Screaming Antelope is going to do. Draw the AI card. Back kick. Pick target in blind spot in range or closest threat in range. Closest threat is going to be Brandy. Everybody else is laying down right now on the job. So turn monster. So target is in a blind spot. Move and attack, so move first and then, okay. So Scream Animal is basically gonna turn around, come here, and then turn around so that Brandy's in the blind spot. Then with one speed, three plus accuracy, and three damage, whoa! Brandy has no evasion. All right, so one speed, Three plus accuracy. We've got a six, so it definitely hit. It hits her in the body. She has no armor on the body. This is definitely a great time to use survival. So she's going to use her dodge. And guys, I, for, I keep forgetting that I've got dash now. That's something I'm going to definitely keep in mind with this guy. As much as he's been knocking us down, running into people, that seems to be what he's going to do. So... All right, so, so she dodged. Brandy dodged that. She's down to one survival now. 
which means that now Luther stands up and both Leah and Dolores stand up. And I think we'll have Luther go first. He's going to move one, two, three. The spear has reached two, so he's going to stop there. And what was the speed of two? And we need six plus. Nothing, nothing. Unbelievable. All right, so Leah right here is going to use her rawhide headband to reveal the top two cards of the AI deck. And I'm going to put them back in any order. So we've got the special AI card, Trample. When the monster collides with a survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level um, to random hit location. To random hit location. Okay, so and that's a trait. So that's going to come out and be on the board. Meanwhile, Rundown is the other one. But I think, I think without a doubt, and Rundown's a basic, I don't even care what it said. I, I'm going to... Well, I do care, so I can try to... Knockdown Survivor, don't have one of those. Closest Survivor in range 12. Yeah, got a couple of those. Uh, move and attack. If the target is knocked down, this attack gains plus three speed. The target's not knocked down. Okay, so basically... Okay, so basically it's just going to be a, a pretty weak attack, really. He's going to turn around and attack with one speed. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put Rundown on top because unless we'll actually put Trample on top because I'm going to hope that I can wound wound him and get rid of Trample. That's, that's what we're going to do. All right. Trample's on top of the AI deck. And right now we're going to use Brandy with her Bone Blade. It's got two speed and six plus. She's in the blind spot, so five plus accuracy. We got one hit. All right. You got to be kidding me. Wailing Slide. The trap is on top. There's nothing else. There's n oh, that's so obnoxious. Okay, so all survivors adjacent suffer two brain damage per monster level and knock back five and are knocked down. So Brandy is down to three insanity. One, two, three, four, five. And knock down. Ugh, that's terrible. That's so bad. Okay, now of course he's about to collide with Luther because he's gonna move do full move, turn the monster directly away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. On collision, gain one random disorder. Now see, I would like to use survival right now to uh, Dodge, or not dodge, I'm sorry, dash. But I don't know if I can because normally, because normally a flow is marked with an arrow on here. But I wonder if the brakes serve as the same thing. He's not doomed, so it seems that he could use survival. I, I, I don't know for sure. I'm going to assume not. I'm going to assume that he just has to deal with what's going to happen because I just reread the rules for using survival and it says specifically during a monster flow, which, uh, uh, for instance, for instance, right there, that arrow, that arrow right there is called a flow and that doesn't have any on here. So I'm going to assume that I can't use survival and he's going to get run over. So here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. He gets knocked down and suffers a disorder. So this disorder I don't think is too terribly bad. Quicks quixotic? Quixotic. Uh, you carry the weight of your settlement on your shoulders. Everyone is counting on you to save them and you will rise to the challenge. If you are insane when you depart, gain plus one survival 
and plus one strength. Or and plus one strength token. Okay. And that leaves only Dolores, who has two options. Either she can just move up this way and really not do much of anything. I guess she could also actually encourage. She's got two survival. She could encourage Luther, going to get him to stand up. Of course, then he's a threat. She could encourage Brandy. She also could move back here and get rid of that acanthus plant. That runs the risk of, of getting some damage, though. Let's encourage Brandy because Brandy's got a ranged weapon and so she's got the best shot of getting back. All right, so Brandy's standing back up. Now that of course was survival that did that, not an action. So now I think Dolores will go ahead and go one, two, three, and then roll for the Acanthus plant. She got a three. You can see, find nothing, archive the terrain. Okay, but at least that's one less plant for the Screaming Antelope to try to heal with. And that's all our survivors, so now let's move back on to the monster. All right, so down here we've got, of course, Trample coming out. So when the monster collides with the survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level to a random hit location. Okay, and so I'm pretty positive I don't draw another AI card there because it doesn't say to on the trample card. So we're going to move on to the survivors, which means Luther will stand up. And he'll go first. Now this is an interesting option here for him. He obviously could attack from here because he has the... Uh, the, the spear, which is reach two, but from here in the blind spot, he'll get uh, plus one to his accuracy, which would bring his accuracy to five. So I think he's actually, that is what he, he's going to go ahead and move all the way into the blind spot. Speed two, speed two, accuracy five. All right, there we go. Two hits, two hits. And we've got the furry tail there you go furry tail and the palette we're gonna go with the furry tail because the, the palette has a failure reaction there's no reaction for the furry tail so let's go with that one. Oh no let's go with that one first so this the antelope has toughness of six the king spear has three strength and yes okay so three strength which means we need a three or more. Oh, roll just one die. Got an eight, so we did wound it. We did wound it. Now that almost was a critical because Luther does have plus one luck, but it wasn't. So that's one more AI card down. And then the second location was the pallet. So again, we need three plus. Nine. Oh, that's a critical. That's a critical. All right, so let's look here. Critical wound. The screaming antelope chokes on the blood spilling from its undermouth. The monster gains minus one speed token. Archive this card. All right, so there's the minus one speed token. And that was, so that was, now, yeah, Luther moved and attacked. So that's Luther's turn. So now what are these other three going to do? Okay, well, first Brandy will go one, two, three, four, five. And that puts her just out of range. You can see here, if you count to six, it's gonna be right here. So she's just out of range, but she can either uh, kind of investigate that bug patch or the dead monster. Which one do we wanna do? Let's, let's go with the dead monster. So we need to roll a D10, a one. Find nothing, archive the terrain, that's unfortunate. So now for the other two, you know, I think Dolores will use her rawhide headband again to look at the top two AI cards. We've got Gore, which is a basic, come on, Gore, which is a basic, and back kick. So let's, let's look at this. Back kick is in blind spot and range, closest threat in range. Turn them, so that's another one speed, three plus accuracy, okay? And three damage, which is awful. 
And then right here, the gore, random survivor range, one speed. Let's see, two accuracy. <laughs> that's gonna result in a knockdown. But I think that's better than the three damage. And I'm definitely not wounding it again this turn. So we'll we'll put the the gore up top and the back kick on the second spot. But now and then Leah, of course, is gonna move move in. So one, two, three, four, five. And does does Dolores want to keep going along with the uh, one, two, three, four, five? No, I think we should definitely collapse in, keep coming down this way. So one, two, three, four, five. All right. So now monsters turn. The AI card that we know is coming. We've got Gore full move in the direction the monster is facing, which would be to here and then turn to face the closest survivor pick target random survivor in range and his range is six so Luther is the only survivor in range move an attack all right so we'll go to here and it is a speed of one all right and even though the monster has the minus one speed and this is a speed one attack the uh, monster or survivor always gets at least one die for attack as I understand the rules so we're gonna roll this the accuracy is two plus Luther does not have any evasion so he does get hit and it is one damage and the damage is gonna go to the waste he does have one armor there but this is also going to result in a knockdown I think I could use if I use dash one two three four five I could use dash to get behind him right now except I don't think I can I think from what I can tell Dash would have to be used during a flow. Dodge is a special situation where the rules say specifically that dodge can be used when a survivor is hit. So I think for that reason, yeah, I think for that reason I can't do that. But I wonder, I wonder, well, we'll see. Let, let, let's go ahead and, and deal with this. I think that I will dodge because I don't want to get knocked down. I want to keep Luther on his feet, so let's use the dodge. That puts Luther down to one survival. All right, so Luther is going to move now. One, two, three, four, five. And before he does anything else, Leah is going to use one survival to dash. And she's going to go one, two, three, four, hmm. She goes five there, and one, two, three, four, five. Yep, so five there. That gets her out of the line in case the antelope takes off after this attack. And she can still get to him on her turn. So that puts Leah down to one survival. So now Luther needs to finish his turn. He's going to use the King Spear. Again, it's two speed. And because we're in the blind spot, we need five plus. And we have two hits. All right. Oh, how many of these are in the deck? I just got a trap again. Just got a trap again. All right. So the attacker is doomed. All adjacent survivors suffer two brain damage per monster level. Knockback five and knock down. So he's going to be knocked to here. Knock down. He is down to five insanity. And then the antelope is going to do full move, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that's not terrible, actually. We've got uh, Brandy right here and Leah right here. And now I believe one, two, three, four, 
five. If Brandy moves over one space, then now Dolores is within range as well. So that might not have been a terrible thing. Yes, Luther is knocked down back here, but we might be able to really do some damage up here. And I'm very happy that I moved Leah out of the way there. That was fantastic. Okay, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll have Brandy go one, two, three, four, five, and attack with the bone blade to the rear of the antelope. Two speed and need five. So we have we have one one wound. Or I'm sorry, one hit. We have the restless rump. Okay. So we have any strength. We've got two strength over here. Again, the antelope has six toughness. So Ah, the antelope has eight toughness. Whoo! I hope I didn't mess it up earlier. Y'all, I apologize. I don't know why I was thinking six toughness. He has six movement and eight toughness. So anyway, we get it right now. So I need to roll a six or higher. And I got a four, so I failed. And he does have a reflex. Turn the monster to face away from the attacker. Full move forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Uh, I probably should not have attacked from the rear because now one, two, three, four, five, six, which then is knocked back five because he ends on her space. I really should have thought better about that. One, two, three, four, five, and knocks down. Okay, but let's think, let's think, let's think who, okay, so everybody has one survival. Dolores, one, two, three, four, five, can't get within range to hit. So, oh, sorry, Leah can't. So I think what we need to do is we, Leah will go ahead and spend her last survival to encourage to encourage Dolores to stand up and then Leah will move over here one two three four five and she's going to uh, try to scavenge the bug patch so let's roll a d10 we've got a five Four plus, gain one random vermin resource and archive this terrain. All right, we've got the hissing cockroach, vermin, consumable. Consume, archive this to lose all survival and gain two D10 insanity. If you are insane, you must consume this. I must consume it? So that was Leah. Well, you know what? She has no survival. So, yeah. All right, so two D10. Two D10 Insanity. So she gains eight insanity for eating the hissing cockroach. I tell, you, I tell you what, Leah is getting a bad reputation. She ate the monster poo a minute ago. Now she's eating hissing cockroaches. She is currently at 13 insanity. Definitely the most insane person in the settlement. But that was Leah's turn. So that leaves us with... Just Dolores, because Brandy already went as well. So Dolores now, though, one, two, three, four, can absolutely move there and attack with her dual bone axes. And we're going for six plus. We have perfect hit. We have only one hit out of all of that. It is the restless shoulder, all right? So... Now these have a three strength, so we're gonna need a five to wound. Eight, we got it, does she, does she have luck? No, no, she doesn't have luck, she has evasion. All right, so now on the wound, well first let's get rid of this AI card. Okay, and the wound, you blow, your blow clips the screaming antelope's shoulder and it jumps back. Turn to face the attacker, then without turning, 
move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. Cancel all hits, now out of range. So it's already facing the attacker. Move one space directly away from the attacker. Okay. Okay, so that's a good place to stop. We're going to stop right there. Now, I think I'm, I'm doing all right at this point. You know, I feel like my survivors are holding their own. They're taking some hits. They're, they're not really doing terrible, though. And the, the antelope has taken a good number of hits itself. So hopefully when we come back, I will be able to keep all my survivors together and none of them will die. We'll see what happens. But thank you for watching part one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, consider subscribing. I'm gonna have lots more Kingdom Death videos coming and I've got some other great games in the upcoming future as well. Until next time, if you're bored online, board offline.